Hi everybody, um, Wendy here. Um, I just thought I'd come to you this evening um, with a bit of a chit chat. Um, <laughs> um, actually I did make a video, I did after I did the whole video um, the other day, I did do a makeup video but with my ring light that I used um, it was such a fail that the ring, I, I don't know what it is that I'm doing wrong at the moment because the, the ring light is supposed to, sh I've got it turned off at the minute and I've got my lights on in my bedroom but if I turn the ring light on, if I show you what happens oh. and I don't know if that's an improvement or not an improvement but it just does nothing from what I can see in the camera so just bear with me, I'm going to turn it off again oh. ok, I'll wait for my camera to adjust ok, so um, I'm not quite sure um, I'm going to have to tweak it a bit more I think um, ok, excuse my mess on my, my table over there um, my son was in here a minute ago anyway, um, yeah so I've come yeah, I did a um, a, a makeup um, video last night, but and I was editing it. Not was it not last night, the night before, and I was editing it, and in it, and I I did it, was doing it for about half an hour, and I had to stop because uh, I just thought I can't put this up because it was just horrendous. It was just I put foundation on that was white. It looked white. Um, it was the first time I'd ever used it, and it was so white. It was just, and I had to then try and put some more foundation on top to. Uh, toned down, anyway it was just a total fail. I might still edit it and put you up as, as a this is how not to do your makeup. Um, <laughs> but anyway so tonight I've got on or today I've had on this um, I don't normally wear blues actually, not much anyway I normally tend to go for purples or burgundies or uh, greys and stuff like that or browns like a natural look. Um, I'm loving this lipstick colour at the moment. No, it's quite a s strong uh, lipstick colour and it's I think it's a Rimmel one. Um, but that's the colour. And I don't even know if it's showing up as, as from what I can see from my camera it looks sort of a rusty colour. But I don't know whether I'm getting a true colour. Um, I don't know, I'm going to have to sort out my lighting. Anyway, so what I've decided to do, I'm going to come along um, and I'm going to do another um, update to my, I suppose, what could be my Fibro series, I suppose. Um, and this is going to be solely based on, oh, just knocked my camera, solely based on how fibromyalgia affects um, speech. Speech and the brain and the connection between the words that you know how to say in your brain but how they come out of your mouth uh, can be totally different. Um, I've had a number of uh, comments um, from some lovely ladies on how Fibro affects my life video um, regarding that sort of subject so um, I thought well it might be a good idea just to sort of like one of them was worried that she was getting dementia um, another one, you know, wasn't sure whether it was medication that it was causing it. Um, another lady mentioned that she um, that she thought people looked at her like she was an idiot because of how fibro can affect um, the connection between the, your brain and getting the words out of your mouth. Um, so. I, I'm just going to speak about my experiences and the majority of the people I've spoken to that have fibro do suffer from and it is a very well known fibro um, uh, symptom. So uh, I didn't even, before I'd even been diagnosed with fibro, the f I noticed uh, myself that my speech or how I used sentences um, was almost it it had changed i mean i you know at one point was a manager managing 30 people 
um, you know, when obviously having to communicate in meetings and do, um, you know, presentations and stuff like that. So I'm used to speaking in front of people and I'm, and even now I'm not scared to, if I was in a room and someone asked for a volunteer or being able, I would be the first to put my hand up because I'm not shy like that, you know, or scared of saying, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm right, but it just means that I'm not scared of saying what's in my head, basically. Um, but it has, I noticed um, that sometimes when I was having a conversation with people, the sentences would come out and there'd be a word in the sentence would be changed. And I'm thinking, and I used to think to myself, have I just said that out loud? Why did I just say that? You know, I know that I've said the wrong word, um, but for some reason, it's I've not been able to transfer that from my brain through all the little, you know, whatever things that computer things, links that go on in your brain to my mouth. Uh, so, yeah, and and I've mentioned a couple of times in my um, other videos. Um, people have left comments before about the fact that I say um a lot and I know I do um it doesn't bother me now uh, I try not to think about it um it's part of me if you don't like it go and watch another video with someone who doesn't say um there's nothing I can do about it I'm not going to apologize for the fact that uh I say um I think I'll explain why I say um and a lot of the time it's almost like a verbal pause for me it's not a case of just being quiet it doesn't work like that it's not just a case of being quiet and saying what I want to say it's a case of having to say something verbally in order to get the right word that I want to use out I'm gonna sneeze oh it might come back a minute it's gone to visit next door yeah, and also what I find as well is that I'll say in a sentence, I mentioned before, I'll say in a sentence, um, I think I actually did it in my video the other night, I can't remember what word I, I was, I wanted to say a one word, but it actually came out very similar, but not the same, not the correct word, if you want, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, um, I've had many uh, embarrassing conversation with um, people that where I've said things that have probably come across as, you know, that they looked at me like I'm a total nut job. Um, one incident was actually in a bank where I ha must have had a 10 minute conversation with this guy behind the thing and then about um, a bank card or something, I can't even remember what, I did not that, I, I know it was about a bank card, but it, the, the full gist of the conversation. Um, yeah, <laughs> and um, it's, uh, basically I had this conversation, it was about changing a, uh, getting, ordering a new card. And then he, uh, the card I'd got was, was, had a crack in it. So, and then he said to me, but he asked me for my card and I and I turned around and said to him, what card? And we've just spent uh, like, you know, 10 minutes talking about this card. And he looked at me like I was a total nut job because I, I knew we were talking about a card and had been talking about a card. And he'd asked me for the card and I said, well, what card? And, and, I, and I sort of like, I thought, what's he on about? And I honestly, genuinely did not know what he was talking about for that split second. Um, so it, that's another part of um, fibro, which is memory and remembering how worm, wor worms, words are formed in a sentence. So that was a prime example of what just happened there. So instead of saying words that are formed in a sentence, I knew that it's words, but I said worms. Do you know what I mean? And I know I've said the wrong word. Um, I can correct it. It's not a case of just saying something and not realising I've said it. 
I know what I'm supposed to say, but how that gets translated from my... There seems to be like a, 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 a connection missing or something before it gets to my mouth and it changes it. When I'm tired um, it or really fatigued, it gets worse. And, um, and then it can affect... I can not so much slur, but um, I'll stutter. Oh, not even stutter, it's not even that, it's not even... I'll struggle to find the most simplest of um, words that are used in everyday conversations that I've used a million times a day, that I've used in a million conversations throughout my life. And I just, for the life of me, can't remember that simple, simple word. And it's totally ghost from my... ghost... ghost... goes from my head. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, and I know, obviously, in speaking to a couple of my friends who've got fibro, they obviously have, you know, the same sort of problems. Um, I think it's a really good idea to try and find friends or a support, support system around you, whether it be, um, it doesn't make it doesn't necessarily have to be meetings that you can go to be, and the reason why I'm if you can get out to them and go then by all means go but even if it's something online or or um even a fibro buddy or something that you can email or just sort of say look you know I'm having a really bad day today it's people who've got fibro you, you don't need to apologize for whatever symptoms you've got or the fact that you're having a bad day because they know they've been there they've done it do you know what I mean so that's why I'm always happy to answer anybody's questions who might private message me or you know or ask me questions or or even just to reassure them or let them know that they're not alone as far as sort of having fibro um because I found that we've where I live there is a meeting where you can go once a week along to this meeting for fibro but unfortunately, um, I could, just couldn't manage it. I struggle so much to go out that the thought of going once a week, um, you know, to to this meeting, I just, I couldn't, I, I, I went a couple of times and I just couldn't cope with it. It was just, not for the fact that they weren't very supportive, because they were, don't get me wrong. And if you can go along to them, then by all means go. For me personally, it didn't work because... I've got the added thing, and I know a lot of people with fibro have that I, I'm struggling with, sort of slight agoraphobia, and I don't go out shopping. I'm not saying I never do, I just don't go very often. If I can get out of going, then I will go. I, I will go to the bare bones of my freezer, and then think, you know, I'll either do an online shop or, you know, most of my, any shopping that I do for the things that I like, like crafts or my makeup, I always buy online. You know, I'm not saying I don't go to out shopping. Um, sometimes, you know, I have to get not so much dragged out because I can't be dragged out. If someone contacts me and says at the spur of the moment, oh, you know, do you want to come for lunch? Or I can't cope, I don't cope very well with that. Um, so... Or sometimes, you know, my son's girlfriend will say to me, oh, do you want to go to town tomorrow? And I'll go, at that, at that particular moment in time, I go, yeah, yeah, of course I will. But when it comes to it, I'm like, right, how can I get out of this? I don't want to go. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I had to go recently into town to get some stuff for Toby's uh, school trip. I, If I could have got out of going, I would have done. But I couldn't and I had to go. So I can go. It's not a case of not going. But I do really, really, I'm not saying it's easy and, and I do struggle. So, um, so anxiety and things like that will also make speech and how you communicate um, more difficult. Now, please, please, please do not ever apologise for a fibro symptom um, for... It's having problems with words and memory and um, communicating is part of fibro. I refuse now to apologise for the fact that I have an invisible 
illness. I didn't ask for it. I don't want it. If I could take a pill tomorrow to get rid of it, if I had a million pounds, if someone said to me, get rid of fibro or have a million pounds, I would get rid of fibro without even blink, you know, that I would. Because at the end of the day, what's the point of having a million pounds if you've, you know, you can't, you know, but yeah, I would, it's just, you know, it's just, it's not a nice illness. So if you've got family who are struggling to understand why that you're saying things a bit mixed up, you know, just explain to them, you know, get them to um, Google fibro, some of the symptoms of fibro, explain to them that, can, I know it sounds a really funny thing to say, but communication is key in as much as if you can communicate to them, whether it be in however way you find comfortable, what some of your symptoms are that affect your day-to-day -day life, um, it will be so much easier for you. Now, not not everybody has families that are um, as lucky as I am, where they're supportive or, you know, know, understand some of the size effects. I mean, believe me, there are days when there's, you know, people in my family who don't because it's just the way it goes you know everyone's got their own lives to lead and they and they forget and they just need a general sort of reminder that I can't always say yes well no, actually I don't say yes anymore um you know if I if I if I can if there's somebody else I can delegate it to then I will um because I just can't always be the one that's how I used to be that sorted everything out it's just not possible um, for my own health, um, you know, although in saying that there obviously are times when you, you've got no choice but to, you know, step up to, but believe me, you do pay for it at, uh, at a later date. Um, so yeah, um, don't ever feel embarrassed that, or think that you, people, or worry that pe you think people think you're an idiot. They're probably an idiot for thinking you're an idiot. Um, you know, no one ever knows anybody's true reasons why. You know, if you can just say to them all, you know, I didn't mean to say that I've got fibro and sometimes it comes out, then that's all you need to say. You don't need to explain anything else. You know, if you feel that you, you want to. You know, I mean, I, at the, the, be the beginning, I, I, do you know what? I was never told anybody I had fibro, fibro because, fibro, fibro, because there's such a stigma about it in as much as a lot of people don't think it's an um, it's all in your head or it's a load of rubbish. Um, if that was the case, then it would have been all in my head all through whatever many years going, not just, you know, three years ago, I didn't just wake up this mo one morning and think, oh, I'm gonna have, just call, have this thing called fibro. It just did not work like that. It does not work like that. Um, I probably had fibro longer than my diagnosis years. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, I believe I've had it longer. Um, yeah, so don't feel embarrassed like I did in the beginning it, um, in telling, communicating or telling people, you know, that if a symptom rears its head and, um, you know, you're feeling a bit embarrassed about it, just explain to them, oh, you know, I've got fibro. Sometimes my words come out a bit mixed up, so I need to say, laugh it off. I, as far as I don't care anymore, it's part of me. There's nothing I can do about it. There's not a thing, you know. There's gonna, I have good days, I have bad days. There are, I have days where I don't have words come out mixed up, you know. Um, there's sometimes I'll say words that they're the right words, but they're just they're there the wrong way. People um, who haven't got fibro do that, but I tend to do it m more. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, just, um, i tell you another thing that I have struggled with as well, which I mentioned to, uh, in someone's comment, was I struggle with, um, visual, uh, words. Now, I can read, I can read a book, that's not a problem. But if I've got a, say, I, say there's a four-digit code, just for example, a four-digit code, that's on a piece of paper and I look at that fraudulent code and I say right okay yeah that's blah 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 and I put the piece by the time I put the piece excuse me the piece of paper down I've forgotten what that 
number was, or the four digit code was. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've totally forgotten. So it's my doggy that's walking around. Amber, go on, get in your bed. Go on. Go on, get in your bed. Get in your bed. Go on. Go on. There you look, can you see her? She's there, look. She's getting in her bed. Papa. Get in your bed. Go on. No. That doesn't just mean come for a cuddle. That means get in your bed so I can't hear your pitter pattering feet. She's she's an old lady now, so she's a bit she's a bit um unsteady on her feet. Yeah, so what was I talking about? Yeah. Um remembering um uh, words or numbers you know by the time I've sort of taken the paper I've totally forgotten um, you know what the numbers were I, for some reason I just can't retain it uh, so what I I use my phone a lot um, so I'll t if I've and I'm not talking about pin numbers I don't take because any pin numbers I've got I know them anyway off by heart now because I've had them for so long but if I'm if I've got to remember a number, um, I don't know if I'm. It's like a, a, a prime example. My a, the code for the router or something like that. Where it's something I've got to remember. If I haven't got the piece of paper in front of me, by the time I've walked away, I will not remember. Um, now I know a lot of people say, well, I can't do that anyway. But it's just it's um every single. It's not like an an odd time or. It's every single time I try and remember something. So I, I use my phone a lot. I, I use it for either taking notes or for t I'll take a photograph of a number so I don't forget it um, on a piece of paper and then I can, you know, refer back to it and use that as a, um, a guide rather than um, keep flipping back paper all the time. I mean, it sounds like something that a lot of people do, but it's just something I'm very conscious of that I, when I'm looking at numbers, um, it's almost like a number dyslexia, dyslexia, dyslexia. Um, yeah, so um, I use my phone a lot for uh, trying to um, remember things like, you know, taking notes or uh, um, use the things that are... Um, are around you my lot are so used to me now that I've, you know sometimes I'll come out with the wrong words they just ignore it and just go on as if I've sort of said the right thing anyway you know I'm very aware of it but um, you know they're, they're really good it's only when I'm speaking to somebody or sometimes when I'm making a video um, I'll forget. Um, I think it was a. I did when I was not. So I'm just getting. I'm just getting something. Oh, I can't find it now. Um, this it was a, a concealer. I've used loads and loads of times. Um, and I was doing a makeup look, and I had this, and I've used it loads of times, but I could not for the life of me remember what it was called or who it was by, and yet I've used it so many times. So it's just, you know, it's just sometimes the communication between my brain and my mouth um, gets a bit mi mixed up. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to sort of come along just to see, let you guys, especially you guys that are newly diagnosed with uh, fibromyalgia that, you know, have noticed maybe speech um, is, a, is one of your symptoms or is a strong, because everyone's different and uh, fibromyalgia symptoms are very varied in from people to people some people um have a, a more acute symptoms some people you know it's very much a very wide spectrum of um you know symptoms but they pretty much can relate to if, like if someone if we all let's just say we put 10 people in a room and we ask them to write down you know um, somebody who's been newly, newly diagnosed, so say newly, <laughs> newly diagnosed at one end, so five newly diagnosed, <laughs> five newly diagnosed fibro people and five um, 
say people that have been diagnosed for a year and asked to write down their symptoms, I pretty much guarantee I would be quite confidently to say nine out of ten, if not all, would have the same symptoms. You know, so I'm that's how confident I am from someone who's just been diagnosed and going on the symptoms they've been experiencing before their diagnosis to you know matching people that have been diagnosed for say a year or even six months so yeah uh, um, just please 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 remember you're not an idiot you are a highly intelligent um, person that's male or female because males get um, fibro as well young or old because young people get fibro as well um, you know doesn't make any difference young old male female you are not idiots you is not all in your head It's not something you can control it is something that um, none of us want we would all love not to have it and uh, it needs more awareness and if I can do anything to help anybody um, understand a little bit more um, and believe me I don't know I'm not a fibro holy grail or anything like that I have only know I've been think diagnosed now for about three years I only know from experience from the last three years but people watch videos or have watched my videos who've just been newly diagnosed and don't realize that oh my god because although there's a list of like fibro symptoms you're, you're given, you get these like symptoms because it's such a wide, vast amount of, of symptoms that can be associated with it. And also there's a lot of um, syndromes that are autoimmune um, syndromes, autoimmune diseases that are, um, not diseases, I can't even think of the word now, autoimmune illnesses that are uh, are also linked and nine times out of ten go along with fibro like IBS, irritable, um, which is irritable bowel syndrome, restless, or restless leg syndrome, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, oh gosh I'm trying to think of some more, um, oh, I can't think of any but there is loads and loads and loads of and I'm sure you know anybody that's watching this will be able to you know give me loads more of other in syndromes that are also highly linked to um, fibromyalgia and you know uh, can be another uh, problem that's you know either caused fibro I mean I don't know who knows what's called fibro sometimes they say it's stress can cause it they say it's um, a really bad illness can cause it and it's what you end your ear anything that affects your immune system can bring it on anything sort of like that I don't know I really don't know and I don't think even think they don't, don't know either there's not enough um, you know awareness I did even once write to um, this morning I think it was I emailed them saying please 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 could you do a fibre awareness video and in actual fact it's fibro awareness week this week I think um, but I did write to them not because I wanted to go on this morning though no, I wasn't I didn't want that but I said to them please 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 do a fibro awareness spot on your show you know get I said gave them the name of the um, the group that runs the support group here and I'm sure they will some can send somebody along who's you know can explain to more or get a doctor that knows because obviously they need a doctor um, that knows about fibro uh, rheum rheumatologist or you know and get and just make it uh, the awareness out there so much more better because at the moment it sucks and it's not just a um, you know it's it's a it's a worldwide illness um, you know all over the world it's not just a you know a rich person poor person big person, skinny person, whatever person's illness. It's just an illness that people get, unfortunately. Um, that sucks. 
so anyway I'm going to end it there um, for today I just wanted to um, come along and explain to one of the um, symptoms that I experience in with fibro which is speech and you know how um, it affects me and ways that maybe you know you can um, but I don't know of any ways that I because I can't stop myself from saying what I'm saying because I can't give anybody advice that way but what I, what I mean is don't ever feel like you're an idiot because you're not that's what I'm trying to say is I can't give you ways to stop it because I, I can't if I if that was the case and I would say right okay do this 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 and it's so much easier it doesn't work like that what I'm saying to you is, is if don't feel stupid don't panic that you're um you know if you're worried that you might be getting dementia please don't sit back and think oh well this person says it's not dementia I won't bother going to the doctors go to your doctors and get checked out if you're worried what I'm saying to you is, is if you've got fibro and you are having this problem with speech or memory it, it could you know it, nine times out of ten it's probably to do with fibro but if you're at all worried please 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 go along to your doctor and get them to you know and don't just walk into the doctor and you know if you're not happy with the, their answer and you want you know a little bit more um like a reassurance or whatever blood test it is i don't know how you diagnose dementia or whatever or, or other illnesses that cause speech problems um i think diabetes does um possibly uh yeah so and what i'm saying to you is is that you know if you do have these symptoms and you've got fibro it more than likely is fibro but if you're at all worried i will say it again please go and speak to your doctor don't just wait and you know um just go and get it checked out okay so thanks very much for watching love you all so much and i will speak to you again soon bye for now bye